Hello my darlings, I cannot believe we are setting up for October 2022, but here we are. I tossed up a bit between doing a Halloween theme and doing something much more floral and pretty because October is my birthday month and the floral theme won out, but I will still do something for Halloween. It'll just be separate, it won't be a full month layout. So keep an eye on my channel in the coming weeks if you are a Halloween fan like me and you want to see that video. Given that October is indeed my birthday month, I've gone a little indulgent, spent a lot of time on this setup, which I don't usually like to spend this much time on a bullet journal setup, but I was just really enjoying myself, so there are a lot of layers and some things I don't normally always include, like a quote page, which you're seeing right here. These brush tip paint pens that I'm using for basically the whole setup, but at the moment for the quote page are from Artistro. And if you'd like to get your hands on a set all of your own, I have a discount code that you can use. It is up on the screen right now. It's just my name, Erin. And of course, there are links to these pens as well as everything else that I use to set up this entire layout in the description if you'd like to use them. Some of them are affiliate links, which means I will make a little bit of money if you make a purchase through them, including the Artistro one. This quote is coming together in a very non-linear way. That's just how I work when I'm lettering things like this. The quote is, trust the seeds you are planting, which I feel it makes sense for a birthday kind of theme. You know, it's about growth without being too obviously aging related. And now we're introducing the absolute heroes of this setup, the washi tape set that you're seeing me get into right now. It's the petals and parchment washi tape set from the washi tape shop. And I talked about it in a haul a little while ago. I'll pop a link to that up in the top right corner in case you'd like to watch. And I said in that haul, I'd be using it for my September theme. And then I changed my mind and I did my space theme for September. And I thought this would just be perfect for a birthday thing. So I held out until October and I'm so excited to finally be using them because I've been thinking about it all the time. They're just so beautiful. I realized after I made my washi tape shop haul video that this washi tape and sticker set was designed by Anna from Journal Away. And she is one of my absolute favorite bullet journal creators here on YouTube and on Instagram. And it makes a world of sense that she designed these and that's why they're so good for journaling and they're so freaking beautiful. So I can't believe I didn't work that one out on my own, but there we go. Moving on to the cover page here, I'm going to add the October heading with some stamps. These letter stamps I picked up from Stationery Pal a little while ago. I have them in both capital and lowercase versions and I'm gonna be using both throughout the layout. And the beautiful frame stamps that I've used a little bit to layer on the left page as well as around the October heading on the right page are also from Stationery Pal. And I'm using them with my paint pens to get the effect here because I don't own a great many stamp pads and certainly not any that go with the colors that I wanted to use in this theme. So I'm just rolling with it and it's working really well. I find with these silicon style stamps that you put on an acrylic block that because it's not a porous surface, the paint pen doesn't dry down on it very quickly. So you can get away with a kind of bigger stamp like this with a paint pen and not have any trouble. The beautiful thing about this washi tape set is that you have two regular washi tapes. One of them is actually very wide and that's the parchment element of the parchment and petals of the rather petals and parchment set. The other washi tape is this narrower one with the peony pattern on it and it's a beautiful light blue kind of color. I just think it's gorgeous. And the other two rolls are washi tape stickers. So they are the postage stamps, the little florals, the tiny little embellishments that you saw me put above and below the tiny calendar on the cover page side. You can tell they've all been designed to work together and it's just so easy to make something beautiful. I really don't think you can mess up with a washi tape set like this if you just stick to those for a theme. It's instant cohesiveness without you having to really try it all. Our next spread is the calendar spread and I'm going to keep it quite open and minimal as far as the practical elements of the design because I wanted everything to have lots of room to breathe. So I've made my calendar quite small this time. I'm just doing the horizontal lines and no vertical lines to close it up into boxes. So things are kind of just floating in the middle of the page. October starts on a Saturday this year. So I've actually wrapped around the 31st and added it to the top row just so this could be a kind of balanced a bit more of a square calendar. I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the left page and Thursday through to Sunday on the right page. 
And I usually like my calendars spaced so that the box for each day is five spaces by five spaces, but I've brought it back down to four this time just to kind of keep things that little bit more tiny and delicate. The paper I'm tearing up here is from a little scrapbooking paper booklet from Stationery Pal, and I'm just tearing off the edges so that it almost looks like a fine art print. You know when you get those beautiful fine art prints with the hand-torn edges? That's sort of what I'm going for here. And I'm layering things up so that I have a column of decoration on the left side of the calendar and another column of decoration on the right side. This next washi tape is actually not from the same set. This one I just picked up from Daiso, which if you don't have Daiso in your country, I'm so sorry. They have really good, really affordable stationery. Actually, when I bought this one, I thought it was a vaguely textured sort of very subtle marble pattern gray, but when you peel it off the roll, it actually has a really fine print to it and it's very delicate and pretty. So it was absolutely perfect just to add a little something extra without it being overwhelming. It's that perfect little hint of baby blue. If you'd like to see what this calendar spread looks like, or in fact any of the other layouts in this particular setup look like once they're all filled in with pen, jump onto my Instagram, I am at erinsmith.art, and you can see towards the end of October what it looks like, or also during October, what it looks like in use, because that's a thing that I like to post over there. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but this is my little trick to get things perfectly centered when you're working with letter stamps or just hand lettering with a brush pen or something like that too. Start with the middle letter and then work your way forward and backward or outward, I guess, from there. So here I started with the middle O of October and then I added the end of the word and then I went back and added the beginning. But you have to keep your wits about you while you do this because when you're spelling things backwards, sometimes you can mess up. I know this because I learned it the hard way. <laughs> You can really see the process coming together on this right side here where I change my mind and move things around a lot. I think I'm going to stick something somewhere and then it sits on my finger for a while while I realize that that's not actually where I want it to go. A collage style layout like this really is a lot of trial and error and I was feeling particularly indecisive as we set this one up as you'll see on some future pages as well. Even though it's one of the most simple pages, I think this next one is my favorite in this whole layout. And this is for goals, musings, and currently. Goals is pretty self-explanatory, I feel, just things that I'd like to achieve throughout the month. Musings is what I like to call a brain dump, and I don't have a whole page for it. I just write down things that are on my mind over the course of the month. And the currently section is for anything that I'm enjoying at the time. So books, movies, TV shows, music, anything at all. I knew I wanted to keep my layers going, so I've grabbed an old envelope that is just sitting in my drawer not being used, and I've used that as some scrap paper to stamp these lovely frames on with the green paint pen. And just like with the previous page, I'm tearing around those to give them that beautiful romantic torn edge, sticking them down over the top of a little bit of decoration, some washi tape, some stickers, and I'm going to add the heading on top with my stamps. And of course, using my old faithful trick to pull everything together, a little line around the outside to make a border just really pulls the layout together if you're not sure if it needs a little something extra, just that simple line can make such a difference. There was something just a little bit empty feeling about this page to me, so I decided we needed one more thing in the bottom right corner. I've laid a couple more things, a stamp and some stickers, and then we're going to move on to the habit tracker. Now you guys know I love my Fomemo blue tooth printer for my habit trackers. I usually print out my calendar and then I don't have to write a whole bunch of numbers out and it's much faster, but I just didn't think it was going to give me that romantic look that I was really going for for this layout. So I've gone back to the old faithful way of writing it out by hand. And yes, it takes some time and your hand is very tired after writing all of these numbers out, but I think it was worth it for 
the consistency and the prettiness of this setup. You don't need to see me do all of these numbers, so let's just jump to that very quickly. I've left justified all of my little habit calendars. The way this will work is I will just color in or circle or add a little cross for each day that I complete a habit. I haven't filled in the habits just yet because I'm not sure yet entirely which habits I'll be bringing with me from September or if there are any new habits that I need to track or anything that I want to leave behind. So I'm leaving the habit blank for now. They'll go in the green space at the top. And I'm thinking I'll probably use a gray Tombow to color in each number when I complete a habit. I'm going to be using it for my mood tracker later on, so it kind of makes sense. It'll be out on my desk anyway. There wasn't quite enough space on this page for the kind of frames that I'd used on the previous pages, so I've gone with a smaller one here so that I can fit it over on the right side with this column of decoration. And I've just hand lettered Habit Tracker inside with my Pigma Micron. I thought about just stamping Habit Tracker across the top, but I didn't want to take up that top space. I just felt like it would throw off the balance of the layout, so I think this worked the best for the situation. I could have probably considered it a little harder before I started, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. This next spread is my content calendar, and I'm still sticking to the open floating calendar with only horizontal lines as the way I'm going to set this up, but I have gone back to my usual bigger calendar space for this one because I need that space to write what I'm going to be scheduling for each of these days. I love scheduling my social media content. It just makes my life so much easier to know. It's kind of set and forget, you know? If you want to be posting consistently, it can be really hard to stay on top of creating all the content that you want to create and making sure that it goes up in a timely manner and is done in a way that it's good quality and stuff like that. So this way I can just set aside a day or two a month and schedule a whole lot of content all in one go. I know what's going up when, uh, as far as YouTube videos and blog posts for my photography site and Instagram accounts that correspond to both of those. So having somewhere to put that and having it all color coded in friction pens so I can move things around if I want to, because they're erasable, makes my life so much easier. And so this page really helps to keep me on track for that, except for when I don't use it. And that does happen some months, but hopefully October will not be one of those months. Stamping on the left page is really difficult because I've stuck so many bits of paper and stickers and stuff into my journal throughout this past few months since July when I started using this journal that it is far from flat, which makes putting a flat stamp on the page really hard, but I don't mind too much. I like the texture of the stamp. And so does the Mitsu clearly come to sit on my wrist while I try to stamp the rest of the word content. I've recently discovered that a lot of the people who watch my videos, in fact more than half, are not subscribed to my channel, and that hurts my heart just a little bit. So if you're here and you're not subscribed, this is my invitation to you. Please consider hitting subscribe and you will get to see my cat in videos too, so that's nice. My spending tracker never changes, and that's because it works, and so when I do change it, it will be because I need to, and not because I'm bored with it, because it's kind of a boring page anyway, but it's also an important one, so here we are, same as ever. Two tables, each with three columns. Those columns are respectively for item, the thing that I buy, cost, how much I spent on it, and category, how I categorize it within my spending. So obviously there are essential purchases like paying your rent and your phone bill and stuff like that. Uh, business expenses for me are a big thing. Entertainment and things that I'm booking for my holiday and all that kind of stuff, everything I buy gets written down here and at the end of the month I tally it all up by category and I transfer it into a big overall spending tracker at the beginning of my first bullet journal for the year so that I can look back on all of it at the end of the year and really know where my money went. I also track my money that's coming in but I don't need a page for that every month so I just do that in an overall thing that's also in that previous journal and then I have a super comprehensive compendium of my income and outgoings for the whole year, which is really nice. Why do I do it? A few reasons, accountability, general curiosity, and something to look back on and make sure that I'm moving in the right direction, I guess. 
I always find it quite tricky to incorporate a mood tracker in a layout where I'm using mostly stickers or washi tape or paper or a combination of all of the above because to suddenly have an illustrative page I feel like it needs to blend in but I also am not journal away Anna levels of artistry skillfulness you know so I've kind of compromised and we're just doing a really simple leaf layout. This is going to be almost like a half wreath and each one of these leaves represents a day of the month. I'm numbering them with my super duper tiny 01 Pigma Micron so that the numbers are almost invisible, they're so small. So I'm just drawing stems and then a little teardrop shaped leaf at the end of each one. And I'm going to have three different colored Tombos, not the paint pens because the paint pens are a little bit opaque. So if you color over the Pigma Micron here, you'll lose those black lines completely. You won't really be able to see them through the paint pen. So I'm switching over to some Tombos to make them a little bit easier to still see at the end. Just making sure I've got 31 leaves so that there's one for every day. And then we have to tie it all together with the rest of the layout. So we're gonna add some decoration in that negative space on the right side just a bit of somewhere to write mood tracker because if you post your stuff on Instagram you need to say what it is so that people know what they're looking at and also it's fun and nice so <laughs> you know this is what happens when you zone out while you're using stamps you accidentally grab the B sticker instead of the D sticker and then you have a mood tracker and I don't know what that is um, I've used a white paint pen to kind of cover up what I could of the wrong letter there and just stamped over it and it's gonna have to do. For anyone who's watching who likes makeup and wears eyeliner, does this setting up this mood tracker not remind you of when you're trying to get your eyeliner even and you keep applying more and more and suddenly you've got a much bolder eyeliner look than what you set out to do. I feel like that's how that mood tracker decoration went. These little swatches are for the three moods, just a happy, a meh and a sad for this month. And this is where I realized I forgot the headings for each of my columns on the spending page. So I'm just gonna quickly add those before we move on to the next page. I mentioned before it's my birthday month and because of that I wanted to include something a little bit special in this layout. Last year I actually did a dedicated set of pages for my birthday and I'll pop a link to that video up in the top right hand corner as well as in the description in case you'd like to watch it and get some inspiration for something nice and self-focused and lovely that you can do for your own birthday. I had just done some quite similar pages to what I used in those in my mid-year review. So rather than doing the full birthday celebratory pages again this time, I'm just taking one of those ideas from last year and incorporating it into my October pages. And I'm calling this one 35 things I love. 35 because that is the age that I am turning. Uh, so I'm just adding these lines in three different areas around the page. They are little clusters of, I think I did 12 and 12 and 11 in order to end up with three columns that look more or less the same length. And obviously in the spaces between those, I'm going to add lots of decoration because it's fun. So on my birthday, which falls on a Monday this year, which is coincidentally my favorite day to sit down with my bullet journal and get things done, I will sit down and I will add 35 things I love to this page, not thinking too hard about it. So it can be like, I love chocolate. I love Gilmore Girls. I love my cat. I love my partner. I love tiramisu, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be too deep. Or you can get in there and be like, I love the Australian healthcare system, or I love the multicultural society that I'm part of or whatever it is, it can be anything at all. It's just a nice positive thing to do for yourself, kind of a gratitude practice thing. And I don't have a gratitude log in my journal at the moment. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. One last spread for October. This is going to be my weekly spread and I'm doing a layout that I haven't used in quite some time. Actually, I think the last time I did a layout like this for a weekly was all the way back in January, which seems a really long time ago now, but also not that long ago at the same time. 
But I was scrolling Instagram and I saw this incredible weekly from All My Sunshine Co. And I just thought, hmm, October, <laughs> that could be absolutely perfect. So mine is the less skilled version, I feel, but I'm still really happy with how this layout turned out. So of course, once again, with the washi tape and the stickers, I'm using them as a divider across the center of the page. And then we'll have four boxes above and four boxes below that decoration, one for each day of the week and one left over for notes that is mostly in there for symmetry because I don't really think I'll be making a great many notes. And that is where the bulk of my planning happens is here on the weekly spread. In the interests of not making really super long videos, because I personally don't really enjoy watching really super long videos, but not also short form content like TikTok, I am rambling. I like to only do one weekly in my overall setup videos and these plan with me videos here on my channel, but I do also love to sit down at the end of every month and jump on live here on YouTube and set up the rest of my weeklies with you guys. So do stay tuned to the channel. On the last Monday of each month, I will set up all of the rest of the weeklies for the coming month. So that means on the 26th of September, I'll go live and we can set up all the rest of my weeklies for the rest of October. And sometimes I like them to all be the same. And sometimes I like to do different weeklies for different weeks. Sometimes I'll alternate between two different styles of weekly. Just kind of depends on how I'm feeling for the live and how much effort is involved in setting up the weekly. So stick around if you'd like to join in for that because I would love to have you there. I am really wishing at this point that I had number stamps as well to go with those, but I don't, so we're just writing it in. And here is the final flip through for October 2022. Thank you so much for planning with me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to see what you do for your October setup, especially if it's in any way inspired by this one. So jump onto Instagram. I am at erinsmith.art and tag me in your stuff or send me photos. I'd love to see. If you have made it all the way to the end of the video, please jump into the comment section down below and tell me your favorite thing about the October time of year. I know it's autumn for a lot of you. It's spring for us over here in Australia. So I'd like to know what you like about October. Thanks again for being here. Bye.